Welcome to Introduction to Project Management, Project Planning Overview. This is Lecture B. The objectives for Project Planning Overview are to identify the importance and purpose of effective planning, identify and describe each component of the project management plan, and define and prepare project planning documents. This lecture will focus on the third objective. The Work Breakdown Structure, or WBS, sets the project boundaries. It is created after the project scope statement is complete and provides detailed scope definition and is developed for all projects regardless of size and complexity. The WBS is one of the most important project documents created during project planning, in part because it helps prevent scope creep. The project scope statement is the starting point for building the WBS. The scope statement is broken down into small, manageable components through a technique called decomposition. Decomposition continues until all work is eventually broken down to the lowest level of the WBS, which is called a work package. You can see this process illustrated on the slide in the graphical depiction of the WBS. In theory, work packages are typically 8 to 80 hours of work. The project manager should break the work down until a realistic chunk of work or a deliverable is reached that can be scheduled, assigned to be performed, cost estimated, monitored, and controlled. The key outputs of the WBS process are the WBS itself, the WBS dictionary, and the scope baseline. The WBS is the foundation from which most planning stems. It provides a graphical view of a project and organizes and defines the entire scope of the project. The project team will analyze each work package of the WBS to identify all the activities that need to be performed. This information will ultimately help develop the schedule and make key procurement decisions. The analysis of the WBS also helps to estimate the cost of performing the work, which ultimately leads to informing the budget, to determine the resources required to perform the work, to determine the quality of the work, and to identify risks. In developing the project schedule, the project team determines what work must be performed, who will be assigned the work, the sequence the work will follow, when it will be performed, and the duration of the work. The WBS should not be confused with a schedule. It does not show activity relationships, sequence of activities, or activity dependencies. 
when the WBS is created, the scope of the project is decomposed to the work package level. The work packages are further decomposed into activity lists, which help develop the project schedule. This diagram is an activity on node diagram. Boxes represent activities and arrows connect the activities and show dependencies. This is a very common method for performing project scheduling. A high-level summary in developing a project schedule includes sequenced activities, meaning that the predecessors and successors of each activity are determined, determined activity paths, the determined duration of each path. Identify the critical path, which is the longest path through the project and determines the earliest date by which the project can be completed. Let's review some schedule terminology. The Schedule Management Plan is a document that contains information on how the schedule will be developed and controlled, how schedule processes will be measured, and what scheduling tool will be used. Duration refers to the total number of work periods, as in days or work weeks, that are required to complete a scheduled activity. Effort is the amount of work or labor hours necessary to actually perform a scheduled activity. Project Schedule Network Diagrams are a schematic depiction of scheduled activities and dependencies, which are logical relationships of activities. They model sequenced activities. Activity relationships refers to a diagramming technique that illustrates the activity's logical relationships. Finish to start, start to start, finish to finish, and start to finish. The schedule documents when the project activities will be completed. The critical path refers to the longest path of activities through the schedule network and it establishes the earliest date by which the project can be completed. You will hear critical path referred to constantly when talking about project scheduling. A Gantt chart provides a good graphic illustration of the project schedule. This type of bar chart is easy to construct and lists the project activities vertically on the left side of the bar chart and the schedule dates horizontally across the top of the bar chart. This is the default view in tools like Microsoft Project, so if you have dealt with tools like that, you have seen the Gantt chart over and over again. A milestone is a marker on a timeline with zero days duration. It signifies a major achievement or important event in a project. Float, sometimes referred to as slack, is the amount of time an activity can be delayed and not push back the early start of a successive activity, which are found on a non-critical path in the network diagram. Scheduling tools are computerized project management software applications that help the project manager develop the schedule and provide information to manage the project. There are a variety of estimation techniques. It is important for the project management team to estimate the likely number of work periods required to perform an activity. The project manager and the project management team can use any of the following estimating techniques in order to achieve this. Analogous techniques determine the estimate by using resource duration estimate information from similar past projects. This is often used in project initiation or early planning when detailed project information is lacking. A project manager may use such expert judgment techniques as acquiring estimate information from individuals with historic information or experience related to similar prior projects. It is not uncommon to bring in someone with expert judgment to help perform project estimation. A parametric technique is a statistical approach to develop estimates based on historical data and other variables, such as square footage or labor hours per unit of work. 
a three-point estimate, calculates the expected activity duration by adding an optimistic estimate, a pessimistic estimate, and a most likely average estimate together and dividing by three. A program evaluation and review technique, PERT, estimate is a popular type of three-point estimate that uses a weighted average estimate. While it has advantages, such as a more precise scheduling and control, it is a more complex and costly method to estimate durations. You must know dependency determinations between activities when preparing a schedule and understand the relationships between activities. That is, it is very important to understand the relationships between all of the activities in the projects before you can produce an accurate schedule. Activity dependencies fall into the following three types. In a mandatory dependency, the activity sequence is inherent in the nature of the work performed. The initial activity must be started or completed before a following activity can begin. For example, you can't erect a structure until after the foundation is built, you can't paint a wall until the drywall is complete, and you can't test an application until after it has been developed. Discretionary dependencies involve using best practices when sequencing activities. For example, plumbing and electrical work in construction can be performed in either sequence, so the manager will have to use best judgment here. An external dependency is something that is required from outside the project and it can impact the sequence of activities. Permits or inspections are examples of external dependencies. Duration compression techniques are used to compress or shorten the project schedule. These techniques are typically used to get a project schedule back on track. Crashing involves adding more resources to an activity. This may result in increased costs, but it will help you push the schedule forward more quickly. Fast tracking is a way to speed up your project by overlapping your activities or running them in parallel. This can often lead to greater risk and potentially impact quality which may sometimes result in rework. During project planning, the project team uses estimated costs of individual activities or work packages. The cost estimates are aggregated to establish a cost baseline. The cost estimating techniques, whether analogous or parametric, are the same as used in time management to estimate activity durations. A cost management plan sets the format regarding how project cost will be managed. The plan is developed by the project team and is a component of the project management plan. It may include level of accuracy of activity cost estimates, units of measure for the resources, control thresholds for cost variation, performance measurement rules, reporting formats, During project planning, the team identifies and documents quality requirements, standards, and metrics to measure quality performance for the project and product, and then develops a quality management plan. The project team should focus on managing customers' expectations by meeting their requirements. The team should not attempt to exceed requirements or provide extras. The Quality Management Plan is a document within the Project Management Plan. This document addresses project quality control, quality assurance, and continuous quality improvement. During the planning process, the project team focuses on a proactive and preventative approach to ensure that quality is designed into the project. If this step is missed, it may result in poor quality with costs associated with excess inventory, waste, rework, and warranty support. 
Resources on an IT project could include one or more of the following roles. A business analyst, a network specialist. For a health IT project, a medical specialist who could be a doctor, nurse, or researcher. A project manager, a programmer. The Human Resource Plan contains the following information. Assigned team member roles and responsibilities. The approach for managing team members and staffing policies. A description of how project resources will be acquired and released. A description of how team members will be managed. A human resource management plan describes how training requirements of team members will be accomplished defines criteria for rewards and recognition, provides project organizational charts and position descriptions, which is an organizational breakdown structure that diagrams the project team members' reporting relationships. A common tool for project management and human resource management is a Responsibility Assignment Matrix, or RAM. This is a diagram that correlates the project organizational structure to the WBS. The matrix diagram on this slide depicts the work that must be performed and the individual or team responsible for performing that work. During project planning, the project team develops a communications management plan that describes the identified project stakeholder information needs and defines the approach for communicating during the project. A communication requirements analysis is performed to determine the stakeholder information needs. The project team must determine what project information will be shared, who it will be shared with, when the information will be shared, and how the information will be shared. Information in the Communication Management Plan may include organizational charts, responsibility assignment matrix, name and contact information of change control board members, meeting times and locations, locations of team members, and potentially more information that can be determined by the project management team. The Communications Management Plan describes the communication needs of the project stakeholders, describes how communication will be managed on the project and the type and format in which the information will be communicated, describes when and how communications will be shared, identifies who is responsible for providing information, describes required escalation processes for communications, The project team conducts a communication requirements analysis to determine the type and format of information needed to develop the communications management plan and identify the stakeholder information needs. Project information is shared with stakeholders by different methods. First, interactive communication, which could include meetings, phone calls, and other types of communication that take place in a two-way format, such as a dialogue. Then there is push communication, such as memos, reports, and faxes, in which one party pushes communications to another party. There are also poll communication, which includes internet sites, knowledge repositories, and other kinds of self-service information resources where people can go and consume the information at their will. The kickoff meeting is the first major meeting with the key project stakeholders. Its focus is on building relationships, reviewing the project objectives, and understanding project goals. It will include a high-level discussion of project scope, risks, schedule and milestones, communications, constraints, and assumptions. It is also a great chance to review team member roles and responsibilities. It allows the project leadership to describe how the project fits into the organization's business strategy and the benefit 
in funding the project. It is also an opportunity for stakeholders to ask questions. Typically, the project management plan is shared during this meeting. Now we'll discuss how to plan for project risk management. Typically, the project risk planning process includes planning for risk management, identifying risks, performing qualitative risk analysis, performing quantitative risk analysis, and then understanding how to appropriately respond to all risks. The project team identifies risks that may affect the schedule or deliverables. The risk management process aims to increase positive events and decrease negative events throughout the course of the project. The project team should address project risk issues quickly and efficiently. The risk management policies of a company will help the project team plan to manage risk. The risk management plan document describes how project risk management will be structured and performed on the project. Components of a risk management plan include the appropriate approach to managing project risks, the roles and responsibilities in managing risks, budgeting for managing risks, identification of key risk categories, definition of risk probability and impact, a risk probability and impact matrix, the risk tolerances of the different stakeholders in the projects, and a place to track risks. Now let's review some risk management terminology. Dimensions of risk include the probability of event and whether the impact is good or bad. Probability of event is the chance of a risk event occurrence. The odds of something occurring is generally measured in percentages, real numbers, or non-numerically. Probability or likelihood can be measured as 0 to 100 percent, or low, medium, and high. The impact of an event is also known as the amount at stake, or consequence. A risk register is developed early in the project planning process and elaborated on during the risk management planning process. The risk register contains identified risks, description of risks, results of the qualitative and quantitative risk analysis, risk triggers, risk owners, and planned risk response strategies. This slide provides an example of a risk register, and you will see it consists of rows and columns, and the key columns are risk ID number, risk statement, probability of occurrence, and impact or potential impact of that playing out. A risk register can include a score, which would be probability times impact, things that could trigger that risk, who is the owner of that risk? Who would deal with risk response? And what is the planned response if that risk does play out? A procurement management plan lists the goods and services that should be gathered from outside the project organization and defines the means by which they will be collected. This concludes Lecture B of Project Planning Overview. In summary, we have reviewed the importance and purpose of effective planning, the various elements of the project management plan, and defined the project planning documents. Remember that the major reason for project failure is the lack of or inadequate project planning. To encourage their investment in the project and hear different perspectives, you should involve your project team in developing the plans that define how the project will be accomplished. The plans will be used by the project team to perform the work and control the project.